everyone. Oh, sorry about that. I bumped the wrong button and it bounced it back and started again. Okay. Welcome everybody to Tactical Tuesday for Tactics Gear and More. And tonight's going to be a little bit about the more. And so tonight's topic is home security. What can you do? So basically I'm picking this up off of what was going on last week during security week? I had a lot of questions, especially about windows and doors and lighting. So we're going to uh, do a little bit more in-depth um, look at these things. And any questions you have, please put them in caps once I get done with the slideshow portion. All right. In other words, in the meantime, get your notebook out and start writing in your notebook your questions. All right, let's see who's all here first, though. Let's hop up here. And first one in tonight was Jay. And then Always Survive. Uh, it looks like he's uh, not going to be here. Actually, he just stopped in to say hi, and he's going to watch the replay tomorrow because he's got to get up early. Uh, Gear Grinding 19 came in next. Then CR from North of the Border. And then uh, Rita Hunter's hair and Phelan Clan Wolf, one of my scouts from back in the day. Uh, Skinner Farms is here. Mary Beth Smith, Granny Goose. Everybody's saying hi to each other. And uh, Tim Fergal's here. Hey, Tim, how's it going? All right. So um, I know it was little over a year ago that um, when I had Dave and Uncle Al up here and we covered doors pretty solidly. And I mean, we covered it solidly with some of the uh, ways you can secure your door to your house. So we're not going to cover doors too much this time other than say, go back and check the, the live stream playlist for about a year ago. All right, so uh, what we're going to do here, we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the thank questions also that came up in the um, this last week during Security Week when I was talking about different uh, different security topic every day on your prep for today. And so we're going to start with Windows because that was the big portion of uh, a lot of the questions where people were concerned about. And Windows are probably the biggest weak point in most houses. They're the hardest to secure and the easiest to break into. And as you can see, breaking into a uh, window can be remedied a little bit by uh, certain uh, things you can put on there that keep the windows from totally shattering and falling down when they get uh, hit. And that, of course, is the security film stuff. And there's a whole spectrum of quality security films you can use. Um, some of them are inexpensive and you apply, apply it yourself and they don't have UV protection uh, for themselves. So basically after a couple of years, they start losing their integrity and they don't do what they want you to do. So what I got here next. And so those are some of the ones you can put on yourself. Some of them are totally clear. Some of them range anywhere from 15% light blocking to 100% light blocking. Um, so those are those work. And there's also some more expensive ones you can get that are light blocking one way. In other words, it keeps light from the uh, inside from shining out so no one can see what's going on. And I know one guy that applied froze. He got the heavy duty expensive ones put in by a company that blocked all the light from shining from the inside out day or night. And then he put on the outside himself, he put um, the cheaper stuff that blocked light from coming in a little bit by, I think it said 25%. So it kept the house from heating up so much. <clears throat> but that stuff that blocks it from the inside out has 
Uh, so it has to be put on the inside, if I remember right. But there are different ones, and they keep your uh, house front. I mean, keep the window from you. Throw baseball bats, hammers at it. You know, take a sledgehammer to it. Um, whatever, uh, and it you know it, it holds its integrity f to a point. If you got ten people out there beating on it and totally shattering glass. After a while, it's going to slut. It's going to give in. Because the glass is in, the, it's the glass that goes into the frame. And you break it around the frame enough, it's going to collapse in. But that's going to take uh, several people, you know, 10, 15 minutes of beating on it. And they're going to be plumb tuckered out by the time they do that. Now, if you look at this picture here, I'm going to move my cursor over there. Up in the upper left here, they actually have an alarm on their window as well. So don't forget that you can put alarms on windows as well to help give you a little bit of security it's not going to stop someone who's intent on just breaking through the window and charging on in now we get to an, a sore point with me i hate with an h to the no sliding glass doors um when my wife and I got married, the house we had or uh, that I had already bought and she moved in with me had no sliding glass doors. My mom's did, and we were over there, and my mom had made a comment about, are you guys going to put a sliding glass door over in your house so you got a nice view and stuff? I was surprised how fast my wife said, hell no. And it surprised, and she covered it. She oops, sorry, I mean, no. And it was funny uh, that she jumped the gun before I could say no. Um, when my, my sister is 10 years older than I am, and she got married at 21, so I was 11. And there was a bunch of us running around at um, her in-law's house for the reception. And one of the, they had, they had a sliding glass door open. So we go in and out of the house. And, you know, I turned around and went to step outside and someone had closed the door, and I stepped right through the sliding glass window. Fortunately, I didn't get cut, but the door sliding, mean, sliding glass door, the, so the door just hit it, and it just went koosh. I mean, it was, you know, instant shatter, I mean, in the little small pieces. And, yeah, so, you know, if, if, if someone just walking into it, a little kid, can cause a sliding glass door to shatter and go away, I didn't want one in my house, and my wife felt the same way. She did not want sliding glass doors in the house. If you got sliding glass doors, what can you do? Well, when my brother built his house, um, his wife had him put sli a sliding glass door in there, and I was just, oh, no, 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 no. And she kept on wondering why I was, you know, I was down on it. Hey, Kathy, how's it going? And finally, I told her the story. And I go, and what are your kids going to do when they start roughhousing and running around and one runs out the door and slams the door behind him? The other one doesn't realize it runs right through it. She had my brother take the door, take it out. And what they did is they put um, French doors in with windows on the side of it, decorative windows on the side and, and filling up that same space. But on the French, French glass of the French doors and stuff that they put in, my brother went ahead and got security doors and put them in. They had uh, some windows in it to let some light in, but they were up high and they were the one that, that separated one that a person couldn't crawl through and you couldn't reach down to get to the doorknob. So that was uh, what, what they did. They got rid of the sliding glass door because sliding glass doors are just, I mean, yeah, that's that screams walk right on through me here. I'm not going to stop anybody. And if you're dealing in a situation where um, the uh, people are getting rowdy outside, yeah, you don't want a sliding glass door because they also screams, throw a rock at me. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce this right. Dioris, welcome. So, all right. So sliding glass doors and stuff. To me, that's that that's that's the that is the biggest security hole you have on a house, and if you can afford to get rid of it, uh, security French doors. Uh, you can either, you can also just you know have have a contractor, you know, 
you know, uh, drywall it in and out, do the exterior out in, or you can just put the, in the whole opening there, you can put um, vertical windows and stuff in there as well. Okay, what's going to say? I hate sliding glass door. Until we replace it, we use a, you know, a rod at the bottom for security. Yeah. It uh, has hurricane glass. Yeah, but still, you know, hurricane glass is stronger, but yeah, it's expensive. And when it does break, you got to replace it. So if you, if you get it replaced, you can actually have the guy sell the whole window unit to someone else, hold sliding door unit to someone else. Then you can get some money back on it. All right, let's go over here. Next one here. Let's see the next picture. Okay, windows. A lot of people had problems with the windows for putting bars on them and stuff. And some of the pe people didn't like, um, Jay, you pack a, you park a 105 house or inside with the muzzle pointing out, someone's going to throw something out of it and run to the side as fast as they can. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the wrought iron and the uh, iron work you put over windows and stuff does not have to be the ugly bars. Now, you notice on this one here, they had it jog out, um, jog out at the bottom there so they could put pot and, potted plants in it to make it look nice. However, the fancier the, the um, iron work is, the more it's going to cost. Yeah, we were just talking about the um, security film there. All right. Hey, is Uncle Al in the house here? Did I didn't see him come in. Yeah, he's here. Uh, so, you know, depending on how much you have in your budget, and that's the biggest problem is budget. You know, money, it comes down to money for a lot of these things. You know, you have to... Uh, budget what you want to spend stuff on and what you're worried about in the area where you're currently living at because where you're living at is totally different to where i'm living at i'm not worried about my windows so much here because everybody in town knows each other and everybody packs and carries you know so anyway so uh windows like this you know they uh can definitely secure your uh, uh the, the great works on these windows can secure your windows and you can make it look uh, nice, a, a, a little bit nicer with the um, uh, plants and stuff in it. Now, these are hurricane shutters, but you don't have to just use them in hurricane, where hurricanes are at. And you can set them up so that um, they, they can open up farther. And, you, you know, you can close them at night or whenever there's trouble around, you just close them down, lock them in place. So outside security shutters is an option for certain things. Of course, what some of these things here probably screw up somebody on the West Coast going, what the hell is that? How do we get through that? Which is a good thing. It slows them down. Jay, quit giving secrets away. We're going to get to that in a minute. <laughs> All right. Now, here's, some, here's a real cool one I, I found. You know, they built, they built it in put the molding on and stuff so it's built in and it hides a um one of those um like our uh gates you see at the mall or whatever it's a solid one that drops down and totally protects the window once again money is the issue but they do have it where they they match it into the house and they put it right in there yeah, yeah, see, uh, uh, Jay's doing a uh, spoiler alert, or as it used to be known as conspiracy theory. <laughs> All right, so the next one here, option for windows, same thing, only a little bit different. And then the eaves over the house where the roof comes down, they put a uh, a flat um, fascia in there, and they build up in that area there the, where the, e or the um, mechanism rolls up for the uh, – Lines. And so you have them up during the daytime that you can drop them either, you know, when you uh, uh, leave to go to work, you know, when nobody's home or at night, you just drop, drop them at night and froze. It also works pretty good at as a uh, blackout curtain. And these blackout, block out a lot of light. 
Yeah, they have, they have ones where it mounts on the inside of the window, so the window can still get broken, but it's on the inside. So you can put it in your private office den, whatever. And next one here. The next thing to help keep people away from your windows, that's not going to protect them from breaking your windows, but it is going to uh, protect them from trying to get at your windows. And that is plants, thorny plants. And there's a lot of them. And I just had a brain fart. I can't remember which one this is. Uh, I think I mentioned it in the uh, on the your prep for today. But uh, one of the ones that we used to like growing uh, was pyracantha. Because pyracantha is covered. It looks like a nice green hedge. And you, you can't see any of the leaves till you bump up against it. All you got to do is just barely brush up against it. And then thorns come right through the leaves and get you. It, but then it has colorful berries on it. So it looks very nice and decorative. But you plant with that underneath your windows, man, you know, first guy that tries that to try to get to your windows, man, he's going to be screaming and running away. Hey, Emma, how's it going? And there's a variety of plants you can put under there. You have other ones that, you know, look more decorative and pretty when they got like thorns like on a rose bush. You have real thorny uh, uh, stems on them. There's, you know, if you're in an area where you can grow cactus, you can plant cactus uh, around and underneath your windows and stuff. Uh, generally, people see that and they know, oh, I'm not going near it. Because they know right away thorns. And they've probably heard some of these the stories about how some of the thorns are so small. When you get stuck by them, you can't see to get them out. And you got to go to the hospital to get them out. Then there is the ones that had some beneficial in other ways as well. Um... This is a lemon tree, and look at those thorns on the lemon tree. The lemon trees we have have a little bit narrower thorns, but they're a, lot, they're a bit longer, and we have to either pick with a special tool, a little basket tool of, of a claw, and you reach up to you pop whatever lemon off you want, or we put on the welding gloves. All right, And then, of course, uh, those that like uh, blackberries or marionberry, which is actually a type of blackberry like the uh, lolly or the or the or the thumb uh berry uh you can plant blackberries underneath your windows and that way you get food and over these last several you get food and protection <laughs> uh yeah home alone comes to mind for a lot of things when it comes to home security Let's see what's the next one here. Next one is uh, uh, raspberries too. Raspberries, uh, can I have some nice little thorns on them and stuff. <clears throat> They're not as as thorny as like the uh, pyracantha or that first one I showed, but you know they'll they'll get somebody. All right. So um, th those for windows, there's a lot of different things you can do. There's also the glass in the windows, and I forgot to get that up. There's the glass that has the wire built into it. It's the stuff we used to have back in the 60s and 70s when I went to school. Uh, they'd have on the windows so the kids wouldn't break the windows and stuff at the school. Uh, uh, Jay? If you're if you're if you're in East LA and you're tracking bears, that bear ain't gonna last too long down there. They're gonna cook him up and serve him in burritos real quick. Hey, Homestead Aquarius, how's it going? Ah, cool. I gotta put that comment up there. I have not seen a, a pear tree that has thorns on it, but you know. Probably because all the pear trees I've seen have been bred not to have thorns in them. I know we have a, have a couple orange trees that they bred the thorns out of them. But my uh, the one my mom had when we uh, took it out of the um, half uh, whiskey barrel and put it in the uh, the ground, it went bonkers, and then it started growing thorns. Not too big or too many of them, but it started growing them. So when it comes to um, your windows and stuff do a lot. I froze. 
do a lot of research. There are a lot of options out there. Um, and in fact, some of those windows I was just talking about has have the wire wire making a little square mesh in it. You know, about I guess it's about uh, an inch, inch and a quarter big squares with the wire in it and stuff. You can find some of those at um, reusing places where they go in and they remodel place and they pull uh, the, the that old ugly wire stuff out and you know they resell it to people who want it. Or you can go. <clears throat> you can step it up and use Lexan. Lexan is um, it's you know it's basically what uh, they use now for our bulletproof glass, but it's still you got to get it thick for it to be bulletproof or bullet resistant. But they have Lexan in uh, three eighths inch thick uh, panes that you can beat on it with an eight pound sledgehammer and it ain't going to break. Well, it might after about twenty minutes of it. But it usually just goes boop, 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 and just, uh, you know, shakes and shimmers and uh, gets you all ticked off and tired trying to break it. But it's also a little bit more expensive, too, than regular glass and stuff. And, Jay, you're very much right. It's putting in, you know, going from a big window to framework with smaller windows in there. And so they're trying to crawl through, having to crawl through a smaller window because it's got wooden framework in there and stuff. Sort of like the old 18, 1800 uh, um, Victorian mansions and stuff. <clears throat> so there are a lot of ways to um, do your windows. All right. So any questions on windows, guys? Any questions, concerns, things I haven't touched on that you, you, know, or you might have had a question in your mind and I haven't touched on it for windows? Thanks, Uncle Al, for putting up there uh, 12 watching and 18 likes. Hey, guys, please give me a thumbs up. Helps me out with YouTube's analytics. Oh, that reminds me. I got to check something over here. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm at. For those that are interested, I got 301 subscribers away from being monetized. Then I'll have a big uh, giveaway. All right, uh, CR has one concern. All right, you need to be able to get out in, in a case of a fire. If you have the um, the windows that are either made out of Lexan or they have the um, uh, the film ex, ex, film exterior and interior film on it, so they're not going to be able to get broken. But you can open them from the inside and they, they swing out, and you can drop out or they slide up or down. You know, you can have it set up like that. So, yeah, you just raise it up and out you go. Yeah, like I said, Lexan is expensive. But yeah, it's also you got to make a decision. Okay, am I in that bad of a neighborhood where I need to get Lexan put on my front windows? Oh, okay, what Mary Beth said about getting out in case of a fire. Yeah. So you, you can set up uh, your windows and do your research for, you know, to get the proper ones to, to get out in case of fire. Now, some of the iron work ones that are on there, you're thinking, well, hey, that's a death trap. If they're installed properly on the inside, there are four pins. You four, uh, uh, there's like a one-inch bolt that comes through the wall with a hole in it and a pin in it. And there's four of those. And you just pop, pop, and push. And the whole seal grate falls off the outside. Home security alarm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the dogs kind of, kind of, you know, scare the heck out of anybody, you know, wanting to come in. Of course, if you're allergic to dogs, one of the neatest tricks I, I saw was a person set up motion sensors outside or in the, you know, shining outside and stuff <clears throat> so that when someone walked by it started a tape recording of uh, a dog barking so as they walk by the window all of a sudden <laughs> like oh crap they got a big ass dog in there now uh, talking about the security alarms there is a 
boatload of ways to go on security alarms now, especially with all the internet ones. However, I will never get an internet based alarm system because, hey, I work for Homeland Security. I know how easy those things are to hack, no matter what the companies say. And so uh, you also don't want someone be, if you have, uh, have the cameras all in your house so you can watch the kids while you're at work, making sure they're doing their homework and not doing things they're not supposed to, that means somebody else can just hawk, hack into the, into the feed and they can monitor what's going on in your house. So they can see what you're doing and when you're going to bed and what's going on inside. Uh, Jay? I can't remember which dog it is. There is a dog that doesn't bark, but it'll bite the snot out of you. I can't remember the breed right now. Hey, Joe, we got Garden State Gardener in the house. Oh, and Laura from Hedgehog's Homestead. Hey, how's it going? All righty. So when you're choosing your alarm, there are several things to think about. A, is it going to be silent only? Is it going to be audible only? Is it going to be a combination of silent and audible? If it's audible, what sort of noise is it making? Hey, Kayline, how's it going? Um, my neighbor across the street back in California, I'm not going to say what police department he worked for, but he's a police officer. He had the big ass bell up in the uh, at the peak of the roof up there where you can't climb up to get to it. You can only get to it from the inside the attic because they wired it from inside the attic. And that is a loud mother. And it's just a bell ringing. And when it goes off, you know, everybody sticks their head out to see if their car's in the driveway or not because occasionally somebody missets, missets or sets it and they want to run out and get something late and forget the alarm's already set and they open the door. And Anyways, yeah. But so uh, how loud it is and how often you have accidents as far as setting it off. Now, if you are hooked up to a security company and you, you, ha you are having accidents all the time, they're going to stop calling the police and they're going to call you to verify, hey, we just got an alarm at your house, you know. So there's going to be delay in getting law enforcement responding if it, law enforcement is needed. Now, one of the other things you can do with these alarm systems for with through companies and stuff that are not inter internet based is you can have them install a panic button. So something's going on. It's not turn. It's not turning the alarm system on and off. You have a button somewhere else, and you go hit that button. And, you know, usually it's like a little box. It has a little uh, circle thing on it. You have to reach into that circle to depress the button that's hidden in there so you don't accidentally set it off. Ah, oh, Skinner says his is silent. Hey, Pastor McGuady, how's it going? And so if you have one of those ones with a, with a panic button, then you just have them set up, you know, hey, call us if the alarm goes off, unless it's the panic button, then get the police there. So for for alarms and stuff, that is a one of those systems where you have have that is is good thing. Now you can have it set up so that um, the panic button either does or does not set off the big noisy alarm on the outside as well. Problem with a lot of these, um, like even the ones that aren't internet based, is the fact that uh, if, the, if the guys are smart enough. And they know where your the phone lines are running to your house, and they're actually going in break going to go break in. You know, you know, they're they're the real thieves that break in and steal stuff, not the rioters. They're going to go okay. They're going to be able to tell somewhere there that there's a possibility there, and they're just going to go cut your phone lines, and your internet line, and all that stuff. Now, if you happen to have um, one of these things, like uh, if you're on, out, out farther away from the city, you got, you know, Dish Network or HughesNet or one of the other ones, or if you have to be lucky in getting on Elon Musk's new orbital uh, uh, <coughs> Skynet um, internet. Anybody caught what I did there with Skynet and Terminator? Uh, Skynet type internet where there's nothing for them to cut. 
and they can't get at the dish once it's mounted up on your roof where they can't get at it, then you're going to have a little bit better chance uh, of it working. Um, now, if you have it set up so that froze, have it set up so all it does through that system is just send a signal as far as oh, alar alarm set, panic button set off, you know, go to this door, that door, whatever, and you don't have any camera feeds going through it. All you have is that type of a setup. That's a little bit more secure. Once again, I do not like the idea of an internet camera system in and around your house that shows a go that is transmitted through the internet so you can view it on your phone because it can be hacked into and the perps then can be hacked into your system and they can see, oh, all right, that camera out there is showing this area, that camera is showing that area. Okay, so we're going to go around this one here and we're going to miss all the cameras. So. <clears throat> Speaking of cameras, you can do um, CCTV cameras and stuff yourself. I probably have, I have a bunch I still haven't set up yet, but I have four multiplexers, uh, 24 cameras, uh, three um, quad, quad ones, and a bunch of independent ones. And all from when I used to have a haunted house because I had a nice haunted house. Every room in that haunted house had two cameras on it so we could see what the people were doing as they went through. If anybody dropped back from the group they were supposed to be staying with, so we could uh, get someone over there, get them to back up in the group. A lot of the cameras I used, Harbor Freight. Um, these have uh, built-in micro. These have built-in microphones, infrared, and has um, how much here? 80 feet of cable with it and you can ex just extend cable real easy because basically it's phone line. So you run your lines around if it's not long enough, you can get a phone line extension little connector and just extend it. I've done that. It works. And so I, I got probably, I got uh, four more here in the house and I got five more out in the shop. I have yet to hook up. Uh. Okay, let's see what's, con what's going on in the side chat here. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Kalen can't do a lot of those things. However, Kalen, um, remember Dave at Southern Ohio Prepping? He had one that was not, that was, you know, wasn't wired. It was a wireless one, a little system. And um, he had it wired up in his house. And so, you know, he had one of those uh, apartment rules where he couldn't put screws in the walls and stuff. And he's able to use like the um, the command strips to hold it up. And so he had cameras set up outside and inside his apartment, aiming at doors and stuff. So, and the windows. <clears throat> and uh, I believe that one, he had that one set up that was inter internet based. But yeah. One time acted like I smacked. Oh, what gear do? One time I. What a good dog would do. Uh, oh, it's, uh, girlfriend had a dog. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, gear, it's time to start uh, stopping by the butcher shop and uh, bringing home some uh, of the good cuts of meat for that dog and the big bones, too. Make him love you more than her. <laughs> Yeah, and one of the things, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad you posted this, um, Skinner. When it comes to monitors, most people think, I can only have monitor in one place. No, you can get a splitter, and you can have the monitor there and put a monitor somewhere else. <clears throat> and if you have the multiplexer that puts up the different camera views across there and there, it duplicates it on through the splitter. And so you have like three or four monitors set up at different locations in the house to view your um, system. Because that, uh, that's one of the things we had. We had several of the cameras in the haunted house set up for my, my son was in the control room uh, monitoring everything. 
and then we had a um, a, a smaller screen that had eight pictures on it down by where the tour guides were staged before they uh, started doing a group so they could see where everybody was so they could tell, okay, all right, that group's past that point. Now I can do the next group. Yeah, Jay. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these kids today ain't don't know what dueling banjos is. Yeah, door alarm stops, and we talked about that um, last year on the one I talked about at the beginning that um, Uncle Al and Dave and I did. Um, there's, they got off, they got the door stop wedge ones, and then they have the bar that goes up and locks underneath un, underneath it, and it has a built-in alarm on it too. So when they push that, it'll open up an inch or so, and the alarm goes off, and they can kick on that. They're going to break the door and stuff before it finally gives way. <coughs> Make sure uh, make sure people place is a place marked people marked by people not to indicate stuff. Not quite sure what you're um, uh, trying to make sure place on is being marked by people to indicate. Uh, gonna have to explain that one. I'm just a little slow on that one tonight. Uh, you know what's worse than a, than a, than a Rottweiler? An oversized St. Bernard. My cousin had one. That St. Bernard's name was, uh, was Bono. He was... 50% bigger than the rest of the St. Bernard's my uh, cousin was raising. That sucker, when it wanted to lick your face, it would come up to you, look at you, jump up, paws on your shoulders, drive you to the ground, and just start licking your face till you were crying. Yeah, live in an area that might. Oh, okay. You keep someone going by and marking, mark, 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 curb marking or doing something about your house. Hobo signs. Yeah, okay. So you're talking about people mark, marking the area and stuff. Well, that's the thing too. If you have a have the cam, have cameras out there recording the all along the outside and stuff, and you pick them up marking stuff. Now you go out there and you remove the marks too. Tennessee Bushcrafter. Hey, how's it going? Uh, could be worse. You could have been like what happened last night on Camp Patton Family Compound when I, after I, it was after the hour mark and people started coming in. <laughs> yeah. So there, you know, so there, there's, um, code markings for, you know, you know, saying, Hey, this place has a lot of, uh, a lot of property and stuff, you know, to steal. And that's, and that's one of the reasons why going back to windows, where you have the, the film on the window that makes it where they can't see in or limits are being able to see in without coming up and going on your window to look inside and then they're, you know, yeah, going to get a surprise. But, uh, and, you know, if you have things in your yard, oh, all right, going to get a little funny here with you guys. Motion sensors, besides for lighting, and we're going to get into lighting here in a minute. There are some really cool motion sensors that you hook your garden hose up to. And they're basically to scare off birds and raccoons and stuff you wandering around the garden. Well, if you don't have a garden, you can still hook it up there. So when someone goes walking by, you know, walking by your stuff there, the sprinklers come on. And they just have motion sensors that you can wire into your, the transformer for your sprinklers. So your sprinklers work normally and stuff, but you flip the switch at night, and now the, the motion sensor is ready to activate your sprinklers. So someone starts creeping around your house at night, and all of a sudden the sprinklers start coming on and getting them all wet and wet and drenched and everything else. And yeah, it can be it can be it can be rather entertaining. 
that's another home alone uh, treat. Do not, however, fill the, the, the garden hose with kerosene. All right, uh, lighting, lighting for the house. One of the questions I was asked, do I aim the lights at the house or away from the house? I've seen people set up all three ways, away from the house only, at the house, and both. Um, having it aimed at the house, I you know, generally don't see the object of aiming it at the house. Unless you're ca- the, 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 the focus of the light catches part of the house as it's trying to catch the walkway or something like that, any place where a person might be. But shining it away at the house, I really don't see the, the, ne- the need for that because all you're doing is showing off your house. And so as far as lighting goes, all our lighting is aimed away from the house. There's only one piece of lighting we have here, and that was put in by the previous owner here. For the garage shop, he has a big um, sodium vapor light on top <coughs> that illuminates the entire driveway, but it also illuminates the front of the shop because it illuminates 360 degrees. But um, all the rest of the lights around here are aimed either at the, at a walkway or towards the street, catching the walkways, the lawn, and stuff like that. So you know, illumin- illuminating away from it. So like it's not hitting the window because if you have light hitting the window, you go to try to peek in the window. One of two things is going to happen: a, they're going to see the curtain move, and you stick your face up, and your face is going to be lit up, or if you move it and you're back far enough and it doesn't catch that, the glare on it of the light shining on it, you're not going to see able to see what's going on out there. Also, if you have lights aiming at the house and you have security cameras up there, guess what happens to the security cameras when the light's shining at it? You uh, wind up whiting out your camera so you can't see what's going on out there. So I'm reading a comment here. Uh, Stacy, how, how, how's it going? Yeah, um, thing is, though, cats learn. Because we use, we trained our cat just using a little spray bottle on a jet stream to keep her off the counter. After about five or six times, she'd stay off the counter probably for about a month or two. Next time she hopped up on there, we nailed her with it. It was three or four months before she hopped up there again. So cats learn that they get sprayed, and it happens every time they go in that area. They're going to avoid that area. Uh, how much dark area do I ha- have near the house? Well, uh, the entire back of the house illuminates from the, um, the, the lights outside. The um, the one side towards the driveway, there is a, a light that just barely catches the side of the house. And uh, it, it'll just illuminate the, the um, what's the, it, it's like you have your, your hard line of light and you have the kind of soft glow after it. that soft glow catches the side of the house, but it, shine, it lights up uh, driveway and stuff. And in the front, same thing. It lights up the bushes and everything and the, and the walkway, but doesn't shine on the windows. And so every place there's windows around or someplace, someplace a person might go to the light is set up and it's aiming down from the, from up above and away from the house. So the light coming down um, just kind of shaves along the edge of the house and spray and shines out. Oh, solar solar powered ones. Yes, those are. They'll have the a, a, either a they're on all the time or have the motion sensors. I love the ones with motion sensors, and because they'll still keep working even in a power outage. And on the batteries in those, in those, if you, uh, if you, if the batteries give out, and they're quote not replaceable, still take it apart, crack it open. Don't just throw it away. You'll find out you can order 
you, you get the number off the battery, you can order a lot of those batteries on Amazon or some, some battery shops as well. Uh, any light option? Okay, so yeah, so, so we're just talking there. Solar lights um, uh, is one way to do it. The other way is if you have a uh, have a power station for your house, and you want you want the lights to go on. However, if your lights are known to be solar powered, and they come on, people aren't going to think that you have power in your house when everybody else is out. Yes, uh, there should be uh, uh, there should be um, a master switch set up for uh, the lights where you have different light switches on it in in the master bedroom. Um, in if you have a den or an office where you have a, a desk where you work at, like in here, I'd have it here on the wall here, uh, there, and then um, some light switches by each door. But uh, yeah, so there's. Um, that way you can control it from different rooms and stuff. And if you have the lights on motion sensors, don't have them all come on at once. Have it come on where they go in this area. This one comes on. And then uh, they have ones that are on timers. So when the one comes on, the other ones have it, have like a five second delay and then they start coming on. So it looks like somebody's turning light switches on. And it's not just automated. The other thing, too, I think I mentioned this on the, uh, your prep for the day. A friend went and took uh, and hooked the motion sensor up so that when they went, went on, the lights outside went on, <clears throat> and it had a thing on inside. So about 10, 15 seconds later, a lamp came on in the living room. So it looked, even, even though he wasn't home, the outside lights would come on. They look. Anybody wake? Anybody wake? All of a sudden, the light would come on in the living room. Oh, they're there. Let's get out of here. Okay. Uh, Uncle Oz says peephole in the wall. Problem is, get, getting buying one of those ones for a wall that are because the peephole device it has to be big enough to go through the wall is really expensive. Um, you have the ones in the doors and stuff. Problem is with the ones with the doors. You know, people like to look in them. What we did. We had we uh, taped a piece of cloth over it, so when they looked in, it was black. So when we got really up close to it first, and then we lift it up, we're blocking the light, and so they don't realize we're there looking at them until too late. Uh, so let me catch up here. I, I stopped to chat there for a half or a minute. Uh, did it, Stacy? Yeah. Okay. Kind of talking about train and wraps, the same thing with spray bottle. Cool. Trail cams is another way of uh, uh, setting stuff up. You can't view it immediately from the house, but you can go out later on and find out what was going on out there. Uh, there we go. Caught up. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. You don't want people you have, you have power, but if you have like, like here, I got out by the walkway across, I had got a bunch of those little mushroom uh, solar powered walkway lights and everybody knows, you know, cause a bunch of people in town have the same lights and everybody knows those are solar powered. So the power goes out and those lights are still on. Everybody knows power is still out. And those are just the solar lights. Hmm. Which will bring me to a point here in just a second here. I'm just catching up here on the side chat. Yeah. And that's why we hung the, hung the, the uh, cloth over in front of it. Of course, and also the way our uh, windows and stuff were situated, we could tell if someone was out there, you know, on the front porch. There is one thing we did do on the front porch. We put one of these directly above them, aiming down. So it wasn't in the normal line of sight. 
and we could see what was going on in the front porch, you know, for that as well. Yeah, the fences with the hot wires, solar powered hot wires are great. Especially when the power goes out and think, oh, good, we can sneak in there. The power's out. And they grab hold of that wire and they start doing the funky chicken. Okay, there's something else I was going to start talk. I was going to talk about. And I for- just had a brain fart and forgot what I was going to talk about. Um, ah, thinking people are in the house. Yeah, except uh, what works better on that. You have conversations going on, and you just have it go across the house, a silhouette going across the living room, and have the train go down the hallway, turn around, and come back several minutes later, and have it set up on a timer so it turns on and it turns off. Uh... Oh, some of the... uh... Oh, some of the uh, the um, trail cams with uh, 3G on it. Yeah. Hey, Tammy, how's it going? We got Rebel Canners in the house. She's up late tonight. <clears throat> One of the things um, I didn't show it this time, but I showed it in some other ones. Uh, we we're talking about uh, security cameras. Um, security cameras out in your yard. If you have like a little birdhouse, you got a little uh, whirly gigs and stuff out there, and you have what looks like a birdhouse out there in it, you hide the camera inside. Side, you have a, a light screen or something over it so the birds can't get in. They really can't use it, but you have a camera in there, or you just have it painted on there and have a hole drilled up bigger for the cameras, the, the lens on the camera. The lenses on some of these cameras are really small, and you stick them out there for that. And let me see, go ahead and close that. One of the other things here, um, let me see if I can find it here real quick for you guys. All right, Amazon wish list. Where is tactical? There is tactical. Do I still have it in tactical or did it go away? I know they removed a bunch of them. I think I may have removed my check-in things out here. Um, oh, yeah. Let me. So for some of your cameras and stuff, you can get, you know, 200 feet of, uh, of the cable, you know, that also has the power in it for the system for the you know, audio and visual and power in it, uh, different lengths uh, on it. And... That's a USB adapter, uh, 16 channel ones. Yeah, I got one of those. See, I got one. I need one more. Um, body cams. Now I'm looking for the other cameras here, guys. Should be down on the bottom here. Oh, here we go. Hidden spy camera. Um, uh, there's out of stock. Um, uh, let me open that up in another channel. Look for some of the other ones here. Earpiece, throat mics, that one. Ah, that spy camera is going away. They took it, took it out. Uh, they, yeah, okay. So they had, they, uh, here's some small ones and stuff. They have some really small ones that uh, that, I, that I don't have on here anymore. But uh, look how look how small these cameras are. I mean, that you know, in between the fingers. There we go. Look at that. That's how small those are. And you can just stick those. Um, so these here are um, have either uh, they're not, I don't think these are um, Bluetooth. No, but they have the they have the mod thing so you can download stuff and everything. Else. But these these are just some of the cheap ones. They had some that have um, that are wireless this big, and you just stick it somewhere else. And it uh, it's motion activated, so it only comes on when someone's out there, so it doesn't kill a battery all the time. So there are a bunch of different type cameras out there you can get. Yeah, yeah, the uh, pen can the pen pen uh, pocket pen cameras and stuff. You can stick them about anywhere. Um, 
there was some basically it was like a um oh geez how uh okay it's about the size of a pencil diameter it's about that long and it has a cable coming out of the back and so you can basically you from inside your house you can just take a dr drill drill out through the side and stick and stick that thing in there and push it out there and then you know goop up behind it so it's sitting there and no one's going to spot it unless they get up this close to it and are looking to see what's that black dot up there oh that's not a fly that's a lens so yeah there, there's a lot of different type of cameras that you can do and body cam I got some footage off of it today when I had some stuff delivered here. It's going to be up on Camp Patton Family Compound tomorrow. So, yeah, but I, this, this one works. The only thing I don't like about this one, it chops it in five-minute segments. I was wearing it out there, and at five minutes, it stopped and started a new file. Um, you, you're playing them together. You can't tell that, that it stopped and started, but it's just, you know, flip, and it shows short, shorter, um, gives you short five-minute files that you have to put together. I haven't figured, shot this to see how long it'll go totally before the battery's dead. But uh, that's one of the th things I may plan out to test doing when I go up to uh, Sam's Club or Walmart. <clears throat> yeah, the battery life on a lot of those. Now, one of the things I like about the ones that were hidden, I was talking about there, like in the, in the birdhouse and stuff, you can set them up like a birdhouse up in a tree or out someplace else where it gets some sunlight on it. And the roof of the birdhouse is the solar panel. So it's recharging it. And, or you have it wired to solar panel someplace else up on the roof and the wire going over into the tree or up in the tree someplace else. But you have the solar panel and remotely mount it and then run the cable around down to that camera that's in the tree or in the landscaping that uh, they're not going to see. And it, and it's, it's wireless as far as transmitting the, the image, but it's solar powered. All right, Uncle, I'll see you later. And yes, it's that time. I need to uh, go ahead and slide off here. So real quick here, let me pull up the, uh, the schedule here. All right. So, all right. So um, next Monday on Camp Patton Family Compound at eight o'clock Eastern, is uh are you ready for bees we're going to talk about bee getting beehives and stuff like that and i contact a couple channels hopefully uh one or both of them will make it up here and talk about their experiences with bees and the one has had has had some you know some really interesting experiences over the last several months on his uh stuff and then next tuesday here and we're going to talk about shelters and yes it's when I put it on the list, everyone was crying. Oh, it's going to be World War Three because it's over there in um, with the, the the big the big red bear attacking that other country and stuff. It's going to turn into World War Three, and we're going to get and we need to have uh, fallout shelters here. So that's what's going to uh, be the uh, topic. Not just fallout shelters, but tornado shelters, whatever type of shelters you want to call it. We're going to discuss that. And so that's what's coming up uh, next week. Um, the following week, I made some changes to the schedule here. Um, on Camp Patton Family Compound on Monday, the, the May 16th. No, sorry. May 23rd is uh, if you you're talking gardens here, if you could only grow one plant, what plant would you grow? All right, and that's what the topic is going to be there. We're going to get input and reasons why from everybody in the side chat. So this is going to be a side chat driven one in two weeks on Monday. Uh, in two weeks uh, on the 24th here, two weeks here, is going to be uh, neighborhood situational awareness. There were some questions about situational awareness, so we're going to address that in two weeks um, here on Gray Man Prepping. All right. I'm not sure if anything else is going on tonight. Give me a second. Let me see. I, I get a quick look here so I can tell you who else is uh, live right now here. Um, Tennessee Tactical One 
is currently live. Uh, Nana S Cooking Cooking Craft Corner is currently live. I'm not sure how much longer Tennessee Tech is going to go. Uh, the last time he went live, he went live for a couple hours. So uh, he's he's up there. And those are the ones that I'm subscribed to out of the uh, 775 channels I'm subscribed to that is live tonight. So those are the ones that are live right, right live right now. All righty. Um, with that, just want to remind everybody, stay happy. Don't get the, everything going on in the world to get you down in dumps and get you depressed. Stay safe. Don't go out and do anything foolish, like walking around at night without a flashlight or anything like that. And I froze. Keep adding to your preps, water especially, food, medicine, clothing, skills, learn more skills. And, of course, everyone, plant a garden if you can. Even if it's in a couple five-gallon buckets or whatever, or some of those big, those big planters you can get at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, those 27-gallon ones, plant something. And you can grow indoor. Seriously, go over and check out my indoor garden experiment going on at Camp Patton Family Compound. I got I got I now have eight tomatoes growing indoors of Roma tomatoes. So, mm. All right, folks, I'll see you around. Stay safe and take care.